<laughs> Over that next. Man, I tell you right now, we're joined by a friend of the show. Um, and, you know, he's always surprising me with some special, special story. Yep. And, you know, I realized something about him years ago when I said, I said, man, that stuff you talk about, that stuff is fake. I, whew, boy, what did I say that for? <laughs> <laughs> what did I say that for? I got what I call an earful for the last couple of years. But you know what? A friend of the show, man, he's bringing on Cliff Baumgartner and Chris Lee joining to the show. Welcome to the show, guys. Welcome, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Outstanding. So, so you guys are here to talk about a documentary that that um, has been released and and that we're going to all get a chance to take part in. But it's something very unique in the story that's being told is about pro wrestling in Raleigh. And I never thought about because I didn't grow up here, but I guess people that grew up here they they remember these things. And the story that's being told makes me believe that this could probably be where it all started. You know where it all started. So let's talk about the documentary and what you guys are coming up. Yeah, so we have a documentary coming out on PBS uh, North Carolina next Thursday uh, at 10 o'clock called When Giants Walked Here. Um, and it's uh, it's it's, it's going to be exciting. Basically, the story of wrestling at Dorton Arena in Raleigh. And so uh, Cliff uh, used to work at WRL. He hit me up uh, like three years ago, told me about this idea. And uh, we've been working on it since. And, and now next week, we finally get a chance to share it with the world. Yeah, man, we're really excited about it. It's 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 really cool to have PBS on board because it's not just a wrestling story. It's it's a North Carolina story and a North Carolina sports story, North Carolina culture story. And PBS has been a great partner in making all that possible. Well, I uh, want to chime in and say that I can talk about it because I lived here <laughs> from here from the area, and so we we're about forty five minutes from Raleigh, and we would drive here. My aunt was a crazy, crazy avid wrestling fan, and we say wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. How, what's the correct way to say it? Wrestling. You can say wrestling. wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. Right. And I love. I was telling yeah. uh, Reese. I said, and he even had in there, you know, wrestling the way that we say it, yeah. and get corrected. Uh, <laughs> but that's the uh, Huck Hogan, Rick, Rick Flair, Dusty Rose, The Rock. Those are all of were our favorites, and we could see them at the Dorton Arena. Quite a few, yeah. I think Hulk Hogan and The Rock probably miss mm -hmm. out on, on Dorton because uh, for a lot of people, this was the Southern Territory. This was the Mid-Atlantic Territory. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get your Ric Flairs and Dusty Rhodes, Roddy Piper, uh, Wahoo McDaniel for people of a certain wow. era. So, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was really the Southern crew more so than the, the Northern WWE crew. But. Well, you could either come here or they would be in Greensboro. Yep. So we saw yeah. them yep. there and you would see a set here. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing people oftentimes don't think about is particularly during the 70s and 80s, there was wrestling in multiple towns throughout the South every night of the week. Every night. It every wasn't night. just yeah. something on TV yeah. on Mondays and Fridays. This was every night of the week. <laughs> Greensboro, Winston-Salem, yes. Raleigh, uh, all up and down the East Coast and throughout the South. It's pretty amazing. And Jim Crockett Promotions was you know based out of Charlotte and they'd run, you know, Dorton was there every every Tuesday. You know, oh, wow. So every Tuesday they had it had sellouts. You know, five thousand people in there uh, with uh, with Are wrestling. So uh, this is something that was huge in in this community, and and you know one of the basically the only major stop for the eastern part of North Carolina for Jim wow. Crockett Promotions. Oh man, I just remember the American Dream. That's my guy. Oh, yeah. That's yes, the road. Sir. That's yeah. my dude. He's yeah. come on TV talking about you no. Know, his mama beat him up. That's why he's American. I don't know. He's talking about the crazy <laughs> stuff. I don't know what he's talking about, but anyway, it was crazy. But Chris, you, you have a little, little background in, mm -hmm. in wrestling or wrestling, which is where you want to say it. <laughs> yeah. uh, to, to talk a little, little bit about that, if you will. Yeah, I think that's part of why Cliff uh, hit me up uh, at first uh, about this. Um, I used to be a pro wrestler. Um, and that blows my mind when I hear that. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it, it kind of happened where, um, you know, I, I started off in radio early on at 102 Jams in Greensboro. And, um, you know, I had a full-time job. I was a morning show producer, got laid off in 2009, hired back as a part-timer. And so I was just trying to find my way. So eventually I was like, let me just do everything I've always wanted to do. And um, the only thing I hadn't really gone after yet was was wrestling. And so uh, when I was wrestling, I was uh, on television at WXI in Winston-Salem. I was working at 102 Jams, and I was a pro wrestler at the same time. So it was like, whatever is going to work, something is going to work out of this. And so uh, I did that for about four years, and um, you know, television ended up being the way. Uh, but it was uh, the best four years of my life. I keep telling people, like, wrestling, becoming a pro wrestler, was the best decision I could make for my broadcast career. Because when I uh, I got some advice to put it on my resume, 
And when I first talked to WRL, Rick Gall, who ended up hiring me, he he just retired back in May. We were supposed to have a 15 minute um, interview uh, on the phone. We talked for the first 15 minutes just about wrestling, and then we talked about the job. So it's really what kind of got me in the door, especially with the history of of wrestling in Raleigh and at WRL. Wow, man, we talk with Chris Lee, and that talk we're talking about you know this phenomenal documentary that's coming out, and so through this process, Chris, you've been, you've been through this before. I know you, I know you have Cliff, but through this process, even you, Chris, um, is there anything that you real that you kind of glean from? the archives and the footage and the pictures that made you have just a, a totally different view or, you know, a healthy respect or totally view, different view of what it meant to this region and what it was, what it was really about. Just talking about it was every day in, in, the, in the state. I never would have believed that. Yeah. I never believe you could have. I don't think there's anything we could say that happens an event. It happens every day, mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right now. Well, that's the thing about you know wrestling being a weekly institution in communities all throughout the South, and particularly in North Carolina. You know, we all love going to shows, right? You love the circus is in town. You got to go, but who would go every single week? Right. So, in order to make that work, wrestling had to be personal. It wasn't just uh, a, a show. It was these were people you felt like you knew, you people you felt like were fighting for you. You mentioned Dusty Rhodes. That was what made him so great. Was he was American your guy? Dream, he was the American <laughs> dream. And so, wrestling became really personal for the people who showed up. And I think that was for me one of the things that was so powerful and exciting when we first started interviewing people. We we got to interview some fans who were there, you know, front row center every single week when wrestling was in Dorton and just what a personal experience it was for them. They'd tell us these stories of, you know, they're going with their grandparents, going with their grandmother, who'd be on the front row yelling at all the bad guys. You know, um, it, this wasn't just a show for people. This is really a part of their memories and a part of the culture for, a, for a, you know, a long time in North Carolina. And it meant a lot to people. And we tried to capture that in the film. Um, but I think that's just such a one of the things that makes it so special when you think about wrestling around here back in the day. And, and even now, as wrestling is, has kind of come back mm. uh, to Dorton in recent mm-hmm. years. Wow, man. We're talking to co-producer Cliff Bumgarner and, of course, our co-producer Chris Lee. Big time uh, wrestling uh, documentary coming out uh, again uh, uh, next week. And uh, I want to question to any one of you guys what's what surprised you guys going through this process of gathering this information and talking to people what are a couple of things that kind of jumped out to you that that you didn't know or surprised you guys i think for me growing up in greensboro i always heard about uh dorton my dad is from yanceyville so when he grew up he was going uh to dorton he was going to greensboro with his dad watching wrestling my mom uh, grew up in danville her dad would mm. come down to Durham, sell his tobacco, and just make a day of it, go over to Dorton and, and see some wrestling, go back up to Virginia, you know. So I've always heard the personal stories, and I think a lot of it was the personal stories. Every mm-hmm. And I like to say everybody has a wrestling story. When people find out I'm a pro wrestler, even if you don't watch wrestling on a week, weekly basis or never been a big fan, everybody has – some story where they've seen it once with a friend and they did that move on them and it hurt really bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just whatever it ends up being. Like, everybody has a story. And so just uh, for me coming here and learning more about Raleigh, I, I think I started to understand more about Raleigh being somebody new here, uh, moving here in 2020. I think that's been uh, the big part uh, for me. Well, uh, we're talking to Chris and uh, Cliff on this great documentary that's coming up. So I wanted to talk about what the first thing came back mentioned uh, when he said to you it wasn't real. <laughs> so me and my aunt, you know, we used to go wrestling all the time. And then on Sundays and Mondays, she would come over and watch it. And I dedicate that in her memory. Her name was uh, Etta Wumble. She loved it. But she would almost want to fight when somebody says it's not real so <laughs> how do you combat that about when someone say well that's not real it's entertainment i tell people that it's a mixture between sports and theater and you know the the concussions i've had were real mm. the the torn ac <laughs> the torn uh, uh meniscus that, that i had real. was real <laughs> and the dislocated jaw i had was real because i really got kicked in the face and my jaw popped out on the other side right. um and so um you know, it's it's we're not trying to go out there and purposely, you know, hurt each other. But um, 
if you are taking a drop kick from a 250 pound man, <laughs> like how can how can they fake <laughs> throwing their uh, their foot in your face, right? That's like, right. Yeah. It, it's like anybody. I mean, honestly, that could be my 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 daughter at <laughs> at you know at 40 pounds. That's gonna hurt. So if somebody was 250, so that's why I tell people it's it's uh, it's like live action stunt work, and uh, there are definitely risks there involved, and mm-hmm. people really do get hurt. But that's why you get trained. That's why you do it the proper way. That's all right. Yeah, we're talking about this phenomenal documentary uh, when Giants walked here uh, by Slugline Media, actually, your company that's actually um, that put it together, and um, you got picked up. You're about going to be out on PBS and Cliff. You know, just you know, as I was reading through some of the some of the press kit and reading through some of the interviews, talk about the process because a lot of people are just wondering like. Like, how did you just think this? Shit? You know, I'm gonna do a document on wrestling, but talk about the <laughs> yeah. process of, you know, trying to figure out where you get the footage and who do you interview, and then, you know, the people that you interview. Is there are there interview any interviews or a interview that probably just blew you away and made you think, oh, this is this is gonna be special. All the time. I mean, you know, we, we put this thing together. Obviously, Chris and I do this for a living, but this started out as a passion project. This started out as, hey, we're both interested in this. We think there's a story here. Let's investigate it. Let's talk to people. Let's see. And so it was a couple of years of just sort of breadcrumbing it out. You talk to one person and they say, oh, you should go talk to this person. And you, oh, this person maybe has some has some photos or there's footage here and you kind of track it down. In terms of the surprises, very early on, we thought it was going to be short. We thought this thing was going to be 10 minutes. 10 minutes on YouTube. That was my pitch to Chris <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> three That's years funny. ago, that was how I got him. Um, <laughs> That's the new 10 minutes, baby. That's all I need. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it sounded good enough to me. So <laughs> and and very early on, one of our first couple of interviews, we, we were speaking to a guy named C.W. Anderson, who uh, wrestled from North Carolina, but it's wrestled all over the all over the country, all over the world. And he started talking to us about growing up seeing shows at Dorton. And then years later, you know, 20, 30 years later, getting to go back and wrestle there himself when wrestling came back to Dorton in the 2010s. And I remember after that interview just looking at Chris and going, Oh, this is big. This is bigger than we thought. There's more to this. And so the the story just kept expanding and to the point that, you know, now it's a it's a full feature on on PBS. But yeah, I think every interview presented some new angle, some new thing that we just had to chase down and keep finding it along the way. Talking to Jimmy Valiant, the Boogie Woogie Man. Yeah. Like, yes, we Boogie Woogie Man. We, 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 went, we went to <laughs> Love Jimmy. Yeah, I'm gonna excited yeah. about that one. Yeah. We went to his uh his camp, his camp in Virginia in like in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was an interesting drive. You don't have any service out there. It's on the top of a hill. Um, you know, very interesting things that we'll talk about off mic that we saw on the <laughs> yeah. way there. Yeah. But, like, uh, you go there, and he's he's gonna about to turn 82. So when wow. we did this, he was uh, 80, about to turn 81. And he still has all his faculties, can recall stories, and it was really great. And we actually have, like, a bonus at the end of the film if you stick around after the, the credits mm. that uh, he blessed us with. But... Um, he just his energy and everything he brought to it, and just recalling and telling the stories of him being at uh, Dorton Arena was just amazing to have there. So. Oh man, real quickly, uh, Cliff or, or either Chris, what do you want people to walk away with when, after they finish watching this uh, this documentary? Man, I think I want people to walk away, hopefully understanding what wrestling meant and means to North Carolina, to the South, and frankly, to American culture, Mm. right? It doesn't matter if you're a fan or not. We're telling people all the time, if you've never watched wrestling in your life, the film is still for you. You're still going to get something out of it. No different than like, I'm not a big football guy, but if NFL, if uh, ESPN does a 30 for 30, uh, I'll be there because it's a personal story. It's a cultural story. It's a sports story. That's what we try to do in the film. And I think that's one of the things people need to understand Whatever you think about wrestling, if you don't like wrestling, if whatever, we're not trying to change anybody's mind, but understand what it means to a culture and to a community and that that's very real, no matter how you feel about what goes on in the ring. And I just hope people walk away realizing this has been a big part of North Carolina history that we haven't really spent a lot of time acknowledging or talking about. Man, outstanding. We're talking about when giants walked here. You don't you don't want to miss this. You guys take an opportunity to tell people where they can check it out, when it's coming out, when it's going to be on PBS, and where they can get it after that. 
Next Thursday at 10 o'clock p.m. You can watch it, but we tell people to download the PBS app. You can watch it anytime, anywhere after it uh, airs on television live next week at uh, 10 o'clock uh, on Thursday. We also have a showing at the Rialto on Tuesday if you want to see it ahead of time. Oh, okay. uh, go to pbsnc.org. Oh, okay, sign yeah. up for on the waiting list because we kind of sold out right now, but it's a free event, so some people may drop out, but... Uh, 550 people expected to be there. Wow. Uh, it's wow. going to be a big time. This shows how big it has been. Oh, wow. Time. That's good stuff, man. Congratulations to you guys on that, man. PBS Thank app, you. When Giants Walked Here next man. week. Yeah. yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding, yeah. man. Yeah. You don't want to be. Makes me think I, I could have been arrested. I, I think I, I could have been arrested. Hey, no, that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm past that. <laughs> this is song. Here we if you love baby.